We're not the suits that talk football. We're the dudes that know football. And you've just crossed over into the trend zone. Dave here with Casey. We are the football dudes. Are you ready, brother? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's working some of the kinks out over there. It's an area we call the trend zone. It is October 16th. And it is a lovely 65 degrees sunny here in Santa Monica, although it's getting a little uh, dusk here. But uh, it's quite a beautiful day coming at you here from Los Angeles, California. Uh, in today's episode, we will talk about the axe coming down, the trade winds are blowing, and the injury bug that keeps biting. And, of course, all of the awesome football games coming up this week. But before we get that started, Casey, can you hit the people up with one of your tasty nugs? Oh, Dave. I have more than one tasty nug. I have five tasty nugs, okay? Mm, five rookie quarterbacks started and had touchdown passes in week six. Jaden Daniels, two of those bad boys. Drake May, three. Bo Nix, two. Spencer Rattler, one. And Caleb Williams with four. Those 12 Woo. combined touchdown passes by rookies are the most in a single week in the Super Bowl era, excluding... 87 to strike here. So that doesn't really count. But the young bloods, baby, getting it done. NFL's looking easy for these guys. Nice. Okay. That is beautiful, dude. Uh, is that it then? You're done delivering? Well, if you want to count Daniels, May, Nix, and Williams, this is the second week in NFL history with four rookie quarterbacks throwing at least two TD passes. Okay. Wow. These rookies come out ready, man. And if they don't, perform right away they're thrown aside like a piece of garbage yeah scrap them <laughs> it's not your grandfather's or even your father's nfl where a guy sat there and learned uh mm -hmm. behind a veteran all right, okay spotify uh apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, amazon music that's where you can catch this show download our podcast anywhere there anywhere you get your podcast okay so we'll move it on to the top trending stories um I can't, it's early for us to get here. We hadn't even, normally we get a chance to at least speculate here. But <laughs> Fire up the point, carousel, baby. <laughs> the the, the uh, hot seat has gotten extremely hot for an NFL coach. One of them's already taken the axe. What's going on here, man? Yeah, solid going out, dude, is a real head scratcher, especially because now they're starting to do some moves in Jetville. It's like, yo, dog, you couldn't have demoted Buddy Hackett and brought Devontae Adams in while I was still running things. Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Dave, he might soon have company in the unemployment line. Doug Ooh. Peterson for those Jags. All these one win teams, uh, the fan base is starting to get a little hot there. Peterson, he could be um he could be the next guy to go. The Jaguars simply just not performing up to snuff. Yeah, real quick, the Jaguars before the season, Khan said this is the best Jaguars team ever assembled under his watch so i thought he said kirk <laughs> <laughs> he might have he and might then have kevin been. stefanski this guy was what the coach of the year a couple years ago or in contention for it yeah. and now um it's all blowed up in cleveland although there might be a little good news this weekend we'll get to that in a little bit there but callahan in tennessee i mean when will what levis is your guy dude i mean are they really gonna shit can this cat this yeah. Close. Who knows, man? Depends right. who's out there next year. And then the Patriots. I think Mayo's going to have some time with the background there, though. Carolina. Um, maybe. Probably well, we know how quick time. David Tepper is to. to yeah. Get rid of who knows? I mean, right. it's a billionaire hothead, so anything yep. could happen. And the Rams are struggling a little bit, too, but I cannot imagine that Sean McVay is going anywhere. But. They might have a quarterback going somewhere if they can't get together a couple of a dubs. Now that is pure speculation, but right. why don't we get those that pot stirring just a yeah, little bit? Yeah, how about uh, go back real quick to Stefanski in Cleveland? If he goes, the GM's got to go too because oh, he's completely. the one that saddled him with that ineffective quarterback and the monster, uh, you know, contract to go with it, dude. Is that it then, Casey? Nobody else is feeling the heat. Well, there might be a little heat in Dallas. Depends who you ask, Big Mike. Um, You're after three that, three, man. Yeah, but the uh, the three on the L side of that, 
I mean, it's been god awful at home. I know they are yeah. hella banged up. Nobody's on that defense working in a new defensive coordinator without some of your best players. But what we saw out of the Cowboys at home last week was absolutely disgusting. And the way they played Baltimore at home and the way they got blowed out by the Saints, too. They got to figure some stuff out. But guess what? After this bye week, it's just uh, San Francisco on the horizon. So <laughs> oh. um, I don't think Jerry would make a midseason change, but there are going to be some candidates if the Cowboys can't turn this around uh, for the 2025 season. So Mike's on the last <laughs> year of that deal. Bill. Yeah, well, we're on to Cincinnati, Dave. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay, so the trade wins have officially begun. The um, the deadline is November 4th, I still believe, uh, which gives us a couple more weeks to – it was pushed back, I believe, uh, to uh, week nine or after week nine. I'm not mm-hmm. sure whatever that 11-4 uh, date is. But um, activity going on here, man. A couple yeah, of receivers, dude. running back. What do we got? Yeah, um, Devontae Adams finally gets his wish to leave the Raiders. Dave, there was a couple teams he wanted to go to, and he got his pick. He will be going to the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. The Raiders will receive a conditional third-round pick that can become a second-round pick. Depends what Adams does there. A couple years older. He is 31 now, but he's back with his BFF. Yep. And uh, these guys had a ton of success. Mm -hmm. So if they can rekindle a little bit of that Green Bay mojo in Gotham, then all will be well in Jetsville. And as we saw Monday night, they were just a little bit off. Is Devontae going to put them over the edge? I don't know. Will he help that run defense? Definitely not. But the offense needs a little spark too. So um, what baby wants, baby gets. Yep. Uh, You know, he didn't want Sala there, did want this guy there. So, um, yeah. It reunited and it feels so good. And Dave, all of a sudden, that hamstring's feeling much better. <laughs> <laughs> Quick recovery for, yeah. for Mr. Devante. Yeah, and, I mean, good job there by uh, by Coach Rogers uh, getting getting the pulling the trigger here, or should I call him GM Rogers at this point? Well, yeah, dude. If he's going to cook the meal, he wants to shop for those groceries. You know what I'm saying? So uh, throwing a little Devonte Adams in there with the ayahuasca, and it's good to go, Dave. And now that might make Mike Williams available there. I don't know yeah. what you know kind of value he's got. Maybe a late round flyer on something like that. But I know some teams that could use him if he is healthy. But Dave, that wasn't the only receiver action going down, and that wasn't the only receiver action going down in the AFC East. We're talking. Amari Cooper to the Bills. Back to the Cowboys? Oh. oh. <laughs> Are you kidding? Come on. The Browns finally let uh, Amari go. They freed him up. That's the a Browns, good move. Oh, yeah. They're going to get a 2025 third round pick and a 26 seventh round pick. And uh, Cooper goes to the Bills with a 2025 sixth round pick, dude. And this is great on several reasons. Obviously, they ran digs in the offseason there. Keon Coleman, he could use a little veteran leadership to learn from. Coop's one of the best route runners out there. No longer on a a team that's just struggling to find some victories. This might be, uh, you know, I think this is a great move for these guys at a time when they really needed it. So it will be interesting to see how soon he can make an impact on that Bills team. But I like this move 100%. Yeah, I know that there were some other suitors uh, for his uh, services there. And I think that that price tag is a little steep for some of the, the teams out there, but you know, depends on obviously how much he's got left in the tank at, at the age of 30. We'll see. Um, obviously that veteran presence though, uh, on the bills, a team that's kind of, they're ready, you know? Yeah. So yeah. this makes a lot of sense. You got rid of digs. This is now this fixes that hole, so to speak. And then you have a lot of other talented guys, but I really like how this guy, I think will come in and just get his ax to the grindstone, so to speak, and, and really put in the hard work and, and uh, <clears throat> show everybody what, you know, a veteran pro, uh, how, how they behave, you know, and the uh, other thing, yeah, Stephon Diggs. exactly. Leader. It's just Josh Allen's team. He is the heartbeat yes. of that squad. He is mm-hmm. the leader. Uh, right. Cooper's not going to come in there and, and mouth off. Of, and, nope. Yeah. He's going to toe that line. So it is a great fit. Unfortunately for MVS, He's out on the street now, but maybe another team uh, that needs a receiver will take a flyer on him. So uh, Mike Williams and MVS might be um, looking for work. Yeah, no doubt about that. And, and you know, both those guys have some 
something to offer to some team. It, and clearly they're, yeah, they're, not, they're no longer, they're no longer <laughs> uh, welcome really. Certainly yeah. the, the way they, that uh, Aaron Rodgers treated um, Mike Williams and in the press conference. Do you really think uh, Garrett Wilson is stoked about this move? Hmm, I don't know. That's a good question. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Also, there is a running back that was on the move. Casey, did you notice that? I did notice that the uh, Texans trading Cam Aker to the Vikings. I'm swapping some late round picks at 26 conditional seventh to the Vikes for a 26 uh, conditional six round pick. Um, <laughs> Acres, a lot of yeah, a lot of condition pick. on addition, and you're wishing someone could cure your lonely condition. No, um, <laughs> Acres was pretty hot for the Rams until Kyron Williams came in there and just took that job. And there was a little bit of weirdness, yes, uh, a couple seasons ago with Acres, totally disgruntled. Yes. Um, now he's gonna go to the Vikings. I'm not sure what that Aaron Jones injury is. Maybe this is just um, some cheap security just in case there, but. Yeah. Maybe that means uh, Jones has a bigger injury than we thought. I don't know. We'll see. Um, these guys have a huge game this week. I'm not sure if Akers is going to be active for that one, but um, be able to add this quality to your team at this point in the right. season. Right. So he's a deal. young back. He's got mm -hmm. a lot of explosiveness. So the reason he's on his third or whatever it is team right now is not the talent. He has been injury prone, no question. But mm -hmm. this guy's got a little attitude issue. That's why they moved him off the Rams, even though they sort of patched it for that one season. Uh, that, yeah. you know, that was, uh, and now he's gone again. So interesting. You wouldn't think necessarily the Texans benefit here by that late round swap in 2026. Yeah. This is more like a thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. Okay. And like you said, it is a cheap ass insurance policy mm -hmm. uh, for those Vikes. So, you know, if you don't like him, you can tell them to hit the road. That's right. Okay, Casey, how, how are you feeling, man? How are you feeling, dude? Super. Thanks for asking. How are you feeling? I'm super. Thanks for asking. All right. Are you feeling <laughs> as good as they are down in the ATL? Uh, probably not. No. <laughs> Why are they feeling so good down there? Because Casey? they got Super Bowl Woo! 52 in 2028. It's going to Hot Lana down there with the Dirty Birds in the, the Mercedes-Benz Dome. So um, skip in Dallas again. When will the next Super Bowl be in Dallas. When will the next one be in Los Angeles, Dave? Good questions, Casey. Oh, pertinent questions. Casey, I have another question for you. Did you pick up a piece of an NFL team this weekend on the cheap? No, but then again, Dave, I don't have $300 million in the bank. <laughs> oh, but you know who right. just keeps on winning? Although, the, is this a win? Well, yeah, it is because you print money, Dave. You're talking about none other than Tom Brady. He's getting a little piece of those Las so, Vegas mean, Raiders. Will what he does rub off on this franchise because the Raiders and Tom Brady seem to be complete opposites. Yeah. And he kind of sent them on their road to dismay. The tuck, the tuck rule? Yeah. You go back there? <laughs> oh, man. Is this the, 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 re the reinvention of the owner quarterback? <laughs> Maybe so. He'll be out there. I mean, he's still younger than George Blanda was when he was playing for the Raiders, I think. So right. suit him up. They need a quarterback, quarterback, so was, owner, assistant coach. So Tom Brady was uh, wrapped in there with another dude, Casey, who also put up some some big uh, coin. Yeah, we're talking about Richard Seymour, his former teammate, winning all them Super Bowls with the Patriots. So um, maybe they can bring the Patriot way to Las Vegas. To this point, it seems like every single thing Brady touches turns to gold, yep. except maybe, um, you know, longevity of a marriage, but he, that's oh. here nor there. But other than that, Brady just wins. So um, yeah. you got to imagine he's going to have a positive impact on these Raiders. Yeah. Speaking of bringing the Patriot way, let's hope uh, this next move isn't bringing the Pistons way into my chargers casey yeah um the owners approved tom gores as a minority owner of the chargers w what's behind this you guys aren't happy with the spanos sisters? yeah the spanos are retaining majority ownership there casey so i think the idea was here that in order to really make sure that they could you know uh be comfortable and move forward and still retain majority ownership they needed um some money <laughs> so money's good 
Yeah, I like why money. Aren't you getting the money. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy's got some cash, obviously. Um, so uh, he won't really have a lot to say. I don't think the Spanoses are still sort of keeping it in the family, so to speak. Yeah, and the NFL, what they're doing, and you're going to see more of this in the next five, ten years, is just opening up that vault a little bit mm-hmm. and distributing some of that cash. These teams, these owners are just printing money, dude. So yeah, and it's really the the price of these these teams now is getting so high six, seven, eight billion dollars that um, in order for one dude to really shell out that kind of money, there's not it's becoming mm-hmm. a smaller and smaller uh, pool. So uh, this allows for partial ownership and to and and then it continue to grow the value of each team. So. If I throw in a million dollars, do I get a freaking shark with freaking lasers? Okay. <laughs> you should. <laughs> All right, Casey, here's a dumb idea. Yeah. Oh, the kitty cats don't like rain, Dave. Did you know that? <laughs> kitty cats don't like that. rains. The uh, the Bengals looking um, at least at Paycor Stadium, getting closer to the conclusion of that, looking for a new litter box here. They're thinking about doing a dome stadium. Part of me thinks, you know, having these outdoor teams is part of the cool thing about football. Part of me thinks these games are so big now. Let's not have the elements mess with them. Let's get these athletes performing to the best conditions possible. I'm still like, you know, because you see one of those snow games. games. Oh, yeah. But something to be said for a clean surface. Yeah. And they're just talking about adding a dome to that current stadium i don't know how you put a lid on that thing i mean <laughs> honest to god i don't know like that that's that's somebody else's you know, fucking crazy wizardry but when i go back in time you know the way back machine dan fouts has still got frostbite <laughs> on his toes from that freezing ass weather down there in cincinnati in that playoff game against ken anderson that one derailed a pretty good chargers run uh, in the playoffs that might have resulted in a super bowl victory for my Chargers. Uh, i digress and though but that was coming off that humid 5,000 right. overtime game in Miami. Oh, this yeah. week you're playing in 100 degrees, 90% humidity. Now you're going to freeze. You're it was like off. negative 50 in the wind chill factor or something crazy like that. And so. you know, the conspiracy theorists would have you believe that they opened the door when the Chargers had the it's ball. true, man. <laughs> that we was a good Linden. Charger team. Oh, you know what? That Super Bowl was so close to being Cowboys Chargers. It should have been. Yep. That would have been amazing, huh? Dag nabbit. All right, Case, this is the bummer part of the show where we kind of just touch on a couple of uh, injuries to – there's a ton of them out there, a ton of them. So we're just overlooking a crap load of them just to get to s- some serious ones for some big-name dudes. Get it started. Yeah, dude, the most brutal one, obviously, Aiden Hutchinson. If you watch that Cowboys-Lions game, it was it was gnarly, very uh, you know similar – to Dax injury, but we're seeing this more often that leg whip when it goes against, you know, he hit one of his own linemen. It was just going so fast. Mm-hmm. He um, fractured his tibia. He stayed in Dallas, got the surgery. He is expected to make a full recovery, but um, we don't know how long that process is going to be. And this cat is one of the emerging defensive superstars in the league, a total bummer to see this guy go down, especially the type of season he was having, yeah. especially with the type of season the Lions are having and where I think they're going to end up might be, you know, the last game of the season. So just a bummer all the way around. Yeah, he was having arguably certainly a, a defensive player of the year type of season. Uh, and they're saying, who knows, it is four to six months. But Campbell said, you know, wouldn't count Hutch out. Never know. He might be able to make it back for the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, probably not. Let's, let's yeah, but but let's not totally bury hope at this point. Let's start planning the Super Bowl with Hutchinson and the yeah, Lions. I'm into it. All right. Anybody else get the, the yeah? Uh, his teammate Kyle Roscoe Pico Coltrane, or just Kyle Pico as his teammates know him. His <laughs> season's likely over with a torn pec. Moving through the rest of the NFL, there's some stars that are banged up. I don't think anybody's gonna miss too much time but you're talking marvin harrison jr chris olave travis etienne we'll get to that later um jordan mason's a little banged up too but a couple guys that are going to actually miss some real time dave um unfortunately jonathan allen for the commanders yeah he's expected to miss the rest of the season after tearing his peck and then 
Rashi Rice, they announced, is out for the season. It's weird that this cat wasn't on the IR and then went from whatever his status was to being done for the year. We kind of thought that when we saw the injury, yeah. but the Chiefs were really, you know, hush hush about it. And now I think um, it was the the initial hope was like, oh, it's not a torn ACL, but then it was like, oh yeah, but it's a mangled PCL. So, yeah, it's all these other things. Yeah, <laughs> there's another ligament <laughs> there that you could. Yeah. Have. Who knew? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Okay, let's move it on to the next segment here, Casey. It is our total fantasy domination. Start us off with the quarterback. Yeah, this guy shared nugs with me. We're talking Caleb Williams or those disco donkeys. 226 passing yards, four touchdowns, 56 rush yards. I can't do the conversion because this game happened in swing in London town. But <laughs> Caleb, we'll see if he can do this in North America next week. But a great job by the rookie quarterback. Yeah, no question. How about this guy? I'm a, I'm going to tell you, an unknown to me, he is actually a free agent in uh, the fantasy league there playing for Tampa Bay. It's Sean Tucker, the running back, 136 yards rushing and a rush TD, 56 receiving yards and a receiving TV TD. Holy mackerel. This guy had to know. He isn't their prize rookie that would, that we've been gushing about either. Yeah. Getting lucky with Bucky. And this is a bad mother Tucker. There was more points and more fantasy domination on that buck squad, dude, 50 something points. How about Chris Godwin, dude, 125 receiving yards and two, touchdowns in my other league <laughs> and at the uh tight end position there was somebody on the receiving end of a couple of those touchdowns and 70 yards from uh from caleb williams in chicago and uh via london there it's cole Komet, the tight end with a really nice fantasy performance there man good good game for cole absolutely all right, Case, moving on to the fantasy go-backs of the week where we go back in time and see if was there anything that we could have done as GM slash coaches to somehow eke out a win or an even better score somehow. Yeah, I could have played Christian Watson instead of Christian Kirk. Yeah. Had the wrong Christian in. Should have gone with <laughs> Sister Christian by Night Ranger. You got that right, baby. <laughs> even with those extra 10 points, I still did not have enough to beat the Luna Tunas. That ran me by about 30 points. But Dave, let me uh, rant for just a quick second about my uh, other league. Went out Saturday sure. night, Sunday morning, early start. I do love the London game, except when there is fantasy yeah, implications man. in there. Didn't know if Joe Mixon was going to play for the Texans. Yeah. When I went to bed on Saturday, still TBD. Woke up about 45 minutes into the morning game to know that Mixon was playing and that Travis Etienne was in the game, but he wasn't playing. He left me with a negative 0.1, and Joe Mixon absolutely went off <laughs> on my bench. Brutal. That's not as brutal as my – because mine's not just a single day, week or any of this. I just happens. went snaggletooth on you, dude. With that. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. So here, I couldn't feel the team, okay? I could not feel an entire team. I had to – have where I was shy of running back. I, I was considering cutting somebody, but I like all my guys. Here's on my bench. So I had to play um, Brian Robinson, who was out at running back. <laughs> Devon A. Chain was out at running back. Christian McCaffrey on IR at running back. Jordan Addison on a bye. Uh, Cooper Cup was out. Malik Neighbors was out. <laughs> Tell me who you think I should cut there. Nobody. You just take up, take the L. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's got me at one and five for the season. Um, got to see. Now, this week, going into this week, I've got all of those guys previously mentioned. Plus, I've got Quentin Johnston. Uh, he's questionable. I got Aaron Rodgers. He's questionable. Brian Robinson is still questionable. Looks like Cup is questionable. Malik Neighbors is questionable. Christian McCaffrey, some signs of life, but not coming back. <laughs> Devon A. Chain still questionable. Um, yeah. Um, once my team gets healthy, Casey, look out. Yeah. I'm going to put some damage on to, onto some other team out there. Hey, why did you draft all those clowns. injured players? Why? Yeah. I sh what I should have done is, yeah, draft healthy guys. Next year. There's yeah. always next year. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you learn, you know, <laughs> mistakes. All right, Casey, Survivor, three strikes. Um, I am uh, struck out. I'm sitting on, in the dugout now. Um, and um, so – 
Yeah, I'm leaving this one to you. What do you got? Last week's most popular correct pick was the Philadelphia Eagles over those Cleveland Browns, and it took them to the last bit of the fourth quarter to get it done. And then Sirianni was chirping at Eagle fan at the stadium. What? Oh, yeah. This guy's a clown, bro. But <laughs> if you did go with the Eagles, you lived another week. The most popular incorrect pick was the Seahawks beating the Niners. I can scoff at that, although I picked the, the Seahawks to win in that game, but I was not stupid enough to put my third strike on it. I went with those Houston Texans. That was only Texans. That was like a fifth of a percent of people. So as brutal as this whole season has been, this week was very, very forgiving. Yeah, absolutely. Texans, it was I'm never out, in though, question. Oh, <laughs> I will fight for you, Dave. And if I get to the top, 10% to you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, you got it. Next week, what are we looking at? We're looking at those commandos over the Carolina Panthers with almost uh, 38% of the country. And if you haven't used those Buffalo Bills, guess what? They're going to play the Titans. That's good for almost 25% of the country. So um, there's still hope. There is still hope, Dave. Unless you're out of the game already. Unless there's you're no dead. Hope. Yeah, then there's yeah. no hope at all. Okay, ba past this nonsense, Casey, let's move on to the real stuff the actual NFL game previews on by this week. It is the bears and your Cowboys. Thank goodness. Getting a little healing up there, right? Uh, Casey, we're going to get into the action here on Thursday, but man, this week is week seven, dude. So this is moving right along. Wait, what did you say? Yes. Week seven NFL action coming up. Week seven, seven. It's slipping away. It most certainly is. Oh, this, is flying by folks oh I mean, should i get it started would you mind it's a thursday night game is it not oh the sean payton bowl hey that's it a good one it is the denver broncos at the new orleans saints and the saints are one point favorites at home who are the lines guys that come up with these odds dave <laughs> yeah right i'll tell you the broncos coming off of loss against the chargers that leaves them at three and three uh, they were down 23 to nothing in that game, though. Um, uh, Nick's had thrown a pick on his very first pass, but they rallied pretty nicely. Bo Nick's thrown a couple of fourth quarter TD passes, uh, but just came up a little bit short. Got it within seven points, though, in an onside kick. So looks like he's a legit NFL quarterback. Pretty mobile, too, man. When you saw him um, escaping the pocket there, he was all over the place, dude, like Fran Tharkington stuff. Um but I'll tell you what, the Denver defense also very good. Uh, number four in points given up at just 16 points a game. On the other side, it's the Saints. That If the season was two weeks long, the Saints would be the highest scoring offense in the <laughs> NFL and be in the playoffs. However, after winning those first two games very impressively, the Saints have now dropped to two and four after getting blown out last week by uh, Tampa Bay, a divisional rival there. They were um, actually way out of the game. Then they got mm -hmm. way back in the game with Baker handing them a handful of uh, interceptions. And then they got blowed out late in that game. Uh, but the bright side is that Sp uh, rookie quarterback, Spencer Rattler uh, getting his first start. Uh, and he's going to be the guy mm -hmm. uh, heading forward, at least, you know, until that oblique gets um, fixed up um, for, for car there um, receiver. Uh, Alave has got the concussion and Rashad Shahid is a, is got a knee and they were kind of non-participants, at least yesterday in practice. Um, so I hope they get Taysom Hill back. That will be a nice get there. Um, but this team in general is pretty dang banged up. Uh, so it's going to be a tough game uh, for these Saints to win against these. It's a good Broncos defense, man. Yeah, that Broncos defense is coming to life. And, you know, every week Bo Nix seems to get a little bit better. Yeah. And, um I'm just stoked to see a little more Rattler. I thought he had some really good moments in that game. Mm -hmm. A couple, uh, you know, tough throws that he'd like to have back. Right. But um, hey, he definitely looks the part. Go. That arm is live, bro. So sure. once he figures all the rest of the stuff out, you know, this was a five-star recruit in college. So um, Big time. Yeah, good news for Rattler and the Saints. Bad news for the Broncos. Patrick Sertain was concussed on, I believe, the very first play from scrimmage last week. Uh. He, uh, I believe, is ruled out already at yeah. this point in time uh, for that Thursday night action. All, All right. right, let's uh, move it on to the international series of games, Casey. We're, this time we're in London again, but we're at Wembley Stadium. 
right? And we have got the New England Patriots at one and five coming into this one. The Jacksonville Jaguars also one and five. So it's a basement game here. Um, t- tell the people what to look forward to on 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 uh, Sunday morning. Uh, sleeping in. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to have to get up early for this game. I probably still will because I'm a sicko like that. And I know. What you about all your people. fantasy players, Casey? <laughs> I. I'll get on my rant about the Jags. I want to start on these uh, Patriots. A little positivity there. We finally saw Drake May. Yeah. I'm pretty good. 20-33, 243, three touchdowns, two interceptions bad. But he's got no run game, dude. There was no Ramon J. Stevens in this game. So um, Antonio Gibson really wasn't the answer there. But you got to like what you saw out of May. He's got a little knee injury. I don't think it's going to keep him out. But I don't know if it's going to slow down his mobility. But at least there's something to be excited for there, dude. And these um, Jaguars, man, I could not be a Jag fan. This is the most disappointing team in the NFL right now. They've been stacking good players there, but they're just – there's got to be player accountability, but it's bad coaching too. There was that one drive in the second half. There was three straight defensive turnover – I mean – uh penalties on third downs those are turnovers when you extend a drive like that and they are not good enough to keep making those mistakes so you're either coaching it or you're allowing it either way the jags are a total disappointment and i am so bummed out that i have a piece of any of those guys in my fantasy league i have christian kirk in our league and i have travis etienne in my other league and i have a hundred percent buyer's remorse in both leagues okay (laughs) Somebody's got to win, Casey. <laughs> uh, I mean, assuming they don't tie. It's got to be. It's probably going to be the uh, the Jags, but they got to do something. And, dude, if they don't win this game, Peterson might not be on the flight back. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Give so we'll see. Ticket All right, Dave. Go. Let's get a better game going. Thank you. Uh, sorry I spoke too soon. Uh, well, at least it's an AFC North battle. We have the Cincinnati Bengals at the Cleveland Browns and the Bengals. Our four point favorites. Whew. Okay, Casey, at the beginning of the year, if you'd have told me this was going to be a combined three and nine between these two teams, mm-hmm. I would have just been like, how is that even possible? Yeah. Right. Bengals got their win last week, too, um, over the Giants in a close one there. Uh, they have played some pretty good football, though, I'll tell you what, this season, but due to a couple of really very poor and uh, untimely mistakes they're just sitting there at two and four um dave hold on before you get any further break out that this is the best two of four team in the league yeah, real quick, that's that's a little right. bit better I about, about that i i failed to mention that yeah there are a handful of two and four teams and this is clearly the best of them thank you um this is a game they have to win though this is a, a game they're supposed to i mean you look at this and the, the way the browns are going right now the bengals have to win this game there is no excuse at all mm-hmm. the browns on the other side have had a very uninspiring season. And after losing to Philly last week, dropped to, to one and five there, they decided to trade Amari Cooper for draft picks, not for any immediate help or anything. So how does that make the locker room feel? Not very good. How much money the one dude is making and everybody else is working their tails off in there. Now, I'm sure there are other players that are um, going to be uh, you know, uh, marketed out there mm-hmm. to see if they can collect some more draft picks because they have to look future future because there's still two more years after this one um, on that big 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 contract i believe it's 92 million for deshaun uh i don't know but stefanski still says that deshaun gives them the best chance to win though i that says nothing good about the other quarterbacks in that room um i have no idea how you can convince the fans or players in that locker room that that dude has given them the best chance to win no way dude he is a sack He's like a tackle dummy. I guess a little good news is Nick Chubb is supposed to be back for this one. They were kind of banged up at the running back yeah. position. So maybe he can bring a little energy. But, dude, why not see Jameis? This guy's a former number one overall pick. Seems yeah. like a good guy uh, for a teammate's past, whatever. But he seems to bring the energy. So they need something there, dude. Like, how can you even expect people to come out and support this team with what they're putting out there? Agreed, man. All right, moving it along. Up next, uh, it is the Houston Texans, and they are at the Green Bay Packers. Packers at home are favored by three in this one. Super Bowl preview, maybe? I could see that. In fact, I almost 
was going to, you know, jot that down as one of my notes here uh, as part of the intro, Casey. But yeah, wow, this one would be an awesome Super Bowl, wouldn't it? Yeah, and these Texans, man, they're a lot of fun. They got those sweet yep. new uniforms. I'm not sure what combo they're taking on the road there, but, but the pack will be in those icy whites, which are also pretty dope. But no, what else is pretty dope is C.J. Stroud. Not a huge numbers game last week, but completely efficient uh, in getting the ass kicking done on those Patriots only 20 to 31 under 200 yards, but three touchdowns did have the interception. But I mentioned it earlier in the show, Joe Mixon on a mission, bro, 13 carries 102 yards. That's almost eight yards a carry broke off a, a 59 yard um, touchdown run. Also had a touchdown receiving Stefan Diggs leading the way um, six for 77 and a touchdown. These mm -hmm. Texans kind of rounded in the shape, dude, doing it out without um, their main receiver. But Diggs working to be that number one tank Dell getting back in the mix. So um, until Nico gets back, these guys can definitely hold it down. But Joe Mixon coming back to this offense Boom. takes it to a whole nother level, dude. Sure um, gave him some life, didn't it? Yeah. Excited about these Texans. Yeah, and the Pack uh, on the other side of the ball there, Casey. The Pack are coming off a big win over the Cardinals to raise their record 4-2 and two in the ultra-competitive NFC North, dude. That division is tight. Anyways, Jordan Love, uh, 22 of 32, 258, four TDs to just one pick, a passer rating of 119.5. So, uh, And again, he looks fully healthy mm -hmm. um, after that you know, early season injury to the knee. Uh, he hit 10 different receivers oh. on the day. So it was Watson and Reed each with a touchdown as well. And Dobbs uh, is back in their good graces. He's got two touchdowns on, on the week there. So um, yeah, uh, everything's looking pretty good for the pack right now. Josh Jacobs, Emmanuel Wilson, believe it or not, combined for an impressive running and receiving day of 163 yards. I'll tell you what, this is going to be an awesome game. Absolutely, Dave. And that is not the... Only awesome game featuring an NFC North team. We also have the Detroit Rock City Lions at the undefeated 5-0 and Minnesota Vikings. And the Vikings are a point and a half favorite in this game. Once again, I ask what the lines makers are smoking. Are they getting into the football dude's nugs? <laughs> that is a good question, Casey. This is, I mean, wow. Just like the last game, this is must-see TV, especially divisional this is going to be absolutely fantastic football game. Lions at four and one. Um, they uh, coming off that win, destroying your Cowboys, Casey. Sorry to Ooh. lay it in there, but 47 points in the process. Continue to be one of the most impressive all around teams. Um, and clearly, obviously, an, an early Super Bowl favorite. But Jared Goff, like last week, was amazing. Again, yeah. 18 of 25, 315, three picks, uh, three interceptions. <laughs> Three TDs, excuse me, no interceptions. <laughs> I didn't see him throw any interceptions in that game. <laughs> Passer rating 153.8. How about Montgomery and Gibbs uh, as a tandem, dominant, totaling 171 yards and two touchdowns in just 28 touches. So uh, those guys are just super impressive tandem there. Um, the speedster wide receiver we've been talking about, Jamison Williams, continues to develop. Uh, he had four touches and 87 yards in a touchdown in this game. So... Uh, this division is super balanced and competitive. So this, that puts even more kind of weight on this game. This is a huge game. One of the best games of the weekend and maybe one of the best games of the season so far. Yeah, dude. And, uh, take it back to last week just for a hot second, you know, Detroit and Dallas played week 17 last year and Dallas winning that game. And there was a two pointer and all that stuff, but there was a yeah, trip and whatever a pointer that was done over and over again. Yeah, so they could have kicked it. The Cowboys won that game, though, but to look where the Cowboys are, and I know they're banged up, but look where the Lions are. The Lions have gotten better than they were last year, and they took that all the way up to the NFC Championship last year. Mm -hmm. They feel better. The way that Montgomery was running that ball, the way Goff is throwing that ball, had such a clean pocket, dude. They were just toying with the freaking Cowboys, dude. They could have put up 60 points if they wanted to. They came in to embarrass the Cowboys. A mission accomplished, dude. This team is playing great football can they sustain it but when that run game goes with the the speed with williams and amon Ra and the tight end there dude this is going to be a tough team to beat they are, yeah. are going to have to replace hutchinson and you maybe go find one of these pass rushers if the browns are getting rid of people maybe you see if you can pry miles garrett out of there Ooh. or hassan reddick or something but um yeah. i love what the lions are doing hopefully they break out 
those black uniforms with the blue helmet again. But I'm here to talk about the Vikings. They're coming <laughs> off a bye week. They're five and zero. Oh. Sam Darnold looking comfortable, playing really good football. We talked about Aaron Jones. He's questionable for this. Um, don't know if uh, Cam Akers is going to be in this one or not. But they're getting healthy there. That defense, Brian Flores' defense, is playing outstanding football. Yeah, and they're doing enough on offense to be complimentary to that. You love O'Connell there. He's really, you know, turning Sam Darnold into an elite quarterback. We knew this guy had a ton of talent. He just had to yep. get into a stable situation. He's there. He's got the weapons. So um, this is a huge test for these Vikings. We've seen them start five and zero, oh, and then figure it's a long and winding road to eight and eight. Maybe yeah. a long and winding road to eight and nine. But this is for first place in this division, which they're holding. So you're going to have to go to that giant uh, boat in Minneapolis and take it from them, dude. I hope this game lives up to the billing, man. But these guys are both contenders in the NFC 100%. No doubt about it, dude. And, yeah, this one's going to be a blast to watch. Mm -hmm. Okay, up next, it's the Miami Dolphins at the Indianapolis Colts. Colts at home are favored by four over the Dolphins. Yeah, and these Dolphins are all kind of banged up too, dude. Um, mm -hmm. We're not sure. At some point, we're probably going to see two again this season, maybe. Um, Tyler Huntley will get another go at this thing. They had the bye week to kind of revamp and figure out exactly what he does well. He had only been on the team, I think, a week and then got thrown out there as the starter. So at least yeah. you had this bye week to kind of get a plan and kind of cater what this – guy does best right They're super banged up at running back too you mentioned on uh a chain there not sure if most going to be there i do like the the rookie jalen Wright. so there's pieces to this dolphin squad but they're gonna have to start winning some games because yeah um i mean the jets just got better and the bills are freaking great so um they're yeah. gonna be jockeying with the rest of the teams i don't see them winning the afc east but you never know and then you flip it over to these colts they got a pretty big win against the uh, the the Titans last week. Joe Flacco, dude, this guy's 100 years old and still has a live arm. So I don't know if Jonathan Taylor's going to be back for this one. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to be um, Richardson healthy and with a chance to play. Jonathan Taylor less likely to play. Dude, let's just keep it with Flacco yeah. for a while. See Hello? where it's going. To let the young guy watch. You don't need yeah. to get him banged up. They're pushing him. He came back too early last time, got hurt again. Let's just let Flacco get a little run here. Let the young quarterback learn from a Super Bowl MVP. I love the way Michael Pittman uh, gutted it out last week. So um, Indy's just kind of fighting there. Both these teams just kind of fighting to stay in uh, the mix there in the AFC. I don't know that either of these teams are going to actually make the playoffs though. Yeah. Well, it's a long season, but yeah, um, both of them would like this win to sort of point it in the right direction. Right. Yeah. All right, Dave, speaking of those Titans, we have the Tennessee Titans at the Buffalo bills and the bills are eight and a half point favorites in this one. Yeah, all right. Well, this one looks like it might end up a mismatch, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to call it. A little bit. They do have to go out and play the game. But Titans dropped to one and four, losing to the Colts last week. You know, Will Levis has been basically a crucial mistake machine this year. Um, he continues Oof. to show flashes of an NFL quarterback, but he can't seem to avoid, uh, you know, just ruining the game with the catastrophic errors every week. Uh, this week it was tossing his seventh pick of the season with under five minutes left. And that it really ended their chance to make a comeback. They were sort of in that game and he had a chance. And then he, he throws the, the soul crushing pick there. Ugh. Bills four and two beating uh, the division rival Jets on Monday night football. It was another impressive performance by Josh Allen, uh, possible MVP candidacy here uh, through two fifteen uh, and two TDs ran for another one there. Um, it was also an impressive game though for rookie, rookie running back, Ray Davis, who I know both of us like this running back class here. Oh. Rookie class is spectacular. Uh, he had 97 yards rushing and added another 55 uh, catching the football. So Bear, Bears, oh, excuse me, the Bills rather uh, should take care of business uh, and, and notch another W in this one, I, I imagine. Yeah, probably uh, pretty easy there. All right, let's move it along, Casey. It is the Philadelphia Eagles at the New York Giants. And the Eagles are on the road favored by three and a half in this one. Yeah, and took everything those Eagles had to beat those Brownies last week in yeah. Philadelphia. 
Jalen Hurts, 16 to 25, 264, two TDs, zero interceptions. This guy's been a turnover machine this year, so it's good to see him not throw any interceptions. A reason he didn't because AJ Brown was back, dude. Six Ooh. for 116 and a touchdown. Yeah. They just needed to get this guy back. Dallas Goddard might not play again. Grant Calcaterra has been doing pretty good uh, in his absence there. And Saquon Barkley either goes completely off or goes completely dark, dude. Just um, 18 <laughs> carries for 47 yards, only 2.6 per. So the Eagles not looking sexy, but found a way to get it done. And, dude, it was so gross last week with the buys um, with my – Patrick Mahomes on a bye week. I had to go with Danny Dimebag, and it was awful just watching that game take place <laughs> against the Bengals. I thought, oh, they'll get some, have to get some run there, but they didn't. Um, the Giants might play these guys tough since yeah. it's a divisional game, but you know Saquon would love to go off on those G men for not re signing him. So, um, Big, big revenge factor there, right? Yeah, so we'll see what happens there. But uh, the Eagles should win this game, but we'll, it is divisional, so maybe it gets a little grimy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard, it's hard. kind of hard to imagine at this point. The Giants have seemingly played some embarrassingly bad football, but they're just two and three. And the Eagles, who we expected so much more from, they're three and two, just one game in front. I mean, if the Giants come away with a victory here, I mean, geez, it's like, Wow. How about, well, let's not get into the the uh, Washington football team here, but yeah. Woo! Okay, let's move it along. The next next game. All right, Dave. We got a bird battle at the site of Super Bowl Fifty Two. It's the Seattle Seahawks at the Atlanta Falcons, and those Falcons are three point favorites in the nest. Dave, talk about the Seahawks. Yeah, Seahawks are three and three. They lost last week uh, to that pretty desperate Forty ers team. Really, uh, ground day game ineffective. Uh, for the Seahawks last week. And Geno Smith uh, had to pass 52 times. Too much, dude, against yeah. the Niners. Come on. Give me a break. For He got 312 yards in a TD, but two picks uh, in the in the loss there. So it's that is not a formula to beat any football team, really, uh, having your quarterback throw for fi- uh, 52 times and running the ball for like 50 yards or whatever it is they got. Um, the Seahawks on the season, and that's this isn't what those numbers are indicative of the season. They are number one in passing yards and number and they're 29th in rushing. So when you're that one dimensional, defenses know how to, um, you know, plan up for you and they know how to attack you big time. So uh, it's pretty tough to win in the NFL without a running game. I know I'm a Charger <sighs> fan. Trust. And, uh, for the last 15 years, it's been brutal, right? So, um, they have got to get that ground game fixed. They've got some talented backs. There's no question. Um, so uh, if, with Atlanta's actually um, run game is kind of near the bottom of the league though. So look for the Hawks to try and spark the ground game. Um, Atlanta's pass defense, pretty good too. So this might be a, a pretty high scoring game. I'm kind of feeling here. Yeah. And uh, the Falcons speaking of, they put up some points last week. They uh, 38 points on the Carolina Panthers there. Yeah. Kirk Cousins. over. <laughs> yeah, take the over. A decent game, you know, 225 yards and a, a touchdown. No interceptions, though. But as bad as the run has been for the Falcons, it was pretty good last week. Maybe that's because it was the Panthers. I don't know. Tyler Algier led the way. Um, 18 carries, 105. That's almost six yards of carry. And then Bijan right behind him with 15 for 95 at six yards of carry. So um, three touchdowns in between them there. So they'd love to get more of that going. Drake London continues to impress yeah. and Kyle Pitts, they're working him more into this offense. Yeah. We need more out of this guy. He is such a weapon, five targets, but three grabs at 70 yards. So if they can figure out a way to keep feeding this guy, yeah. it's going to be a tough team to deal with yeah. when you're playing these Falcons. No doubt about it. And Mooney has been a pretty nice uh, participant there, Dar- Darnell Mooney at the receiver position too, but you're absolutely right. If they can get Pitts to perform week in and week out at a higher level, we know he's got the talent, then that really can diversify that offense quite a bit more. And I think that that's really what they need to try and force that. Yeah. And Ray Ray McLeod, don't want to forget about him, is just a fun name to say. Ray Ray. <laughs> that's two Rays. <laughs> All right, Dave, let's get to the late games. We are talking about the Las Vegas Raiders at our Los Angeles Rams, both of these teams used to live in LA. Both of them left. One of them's home, and that home team is five and a half point favorites. Dave, 
Yeah. Okay. Starting with the Raiders. The Raiders are now two and four after getting absolutely clobbered by the Steelers last week. Though the big story here uh, in Vegas is the trade of Devontae Adams for draft picks, not getting any help this year while losing their best offensive player. Let's be honest. Oh. Will the Raiders um, consider moving any more players before the deadline? Uh, I don't know. We'll see because the next couple of big games might really uh, dictate that. Uh, it seems moving forward in a bigger picture look at this Raiders team that a new quarterback is probably a certainty down the road. So collecting a couple more draft picks might be uh, advantageous there. Um, so we'll see. Does this outcome make a difference in that thought process? Moving over to the Rams, we know they're in a different situation, uh, even though uh, their record is just one in four right now. Um, they are coming off um, the bye, one of the most banged up teams in the league. And that's why you can just equate these two things. Too many dudes hurt, can't win football games, right? Uh, the good news, they might get Cooper Cup back. And uh, he's been making good progress. They're testing him. I don't know what the level of uh, comfortable, uh, you know, it's going to he's still be hurt. But can he get out there? Is he, is he functional? Uh, he's been injured since week two. I believe it was the first quarter. I know because he's my fantasy guy and he's not putting up any points ever. Okay, so I'm hoping they get him back. Puka Nakua still out. Uh, Steve Avila, the offensive lineman, still out. Uh, Joe Noteboom, another offensive lineman. Uh, he's on IR, still out. So Brutal. Yeah. Absolutely brutal for these Rams. And yeah. um, the loser of this one, you can't bury a team with their fifth loss, but the loser of this one's probably, you know, they might really start looking at the trade deadline if that happens. Yeah, no question. No question. All right, moving it along. The Carolina Panthers at the Washington Commanders. Casey Commanders favored by eight. When was the last time that Washington was favored by eight? I know they are at home. But they still. Are, yeah, and these FTs, man, they seem to have it turned around, although they did lose the battle from Maryland last week to the Baltimore Ravens. That was good. Um, they could not stop. Derek Henry, um, but there's a lot of that going around. Yeah. And Lamar, great game, but I'm here to talk about these commandos. Um, Jaden Daniels, obviously in the mix for Offensive Rookie of the Year. It's going to be fun to see how these rookie quarterbacks finish the season. You know, it's a much longer season. It's going to get trickier when we get into these late months. But so far, dude, this cat has passed every test that's um, he's had to sit down and take last week. Um, not his best game, but he did find scary Terry McLaurin for two touchdowns, but got absolutely no help from the run game as a team. They combined for, I think, like 53 yards or something like that. Yeah. And Daniels had 22 of them. So um, you mentioned Brian Robinson was out last week. I'm not sure if he's going to be back this week, but they definitely need him to get in that mix. Um, and these Panthers, man, they got rolled by the Falcons. Um, maybe they start looking at dishing Chuba Hubbard because um, the rookie running back Brooks out of Texas is getting Getting close. I'm not sure he's going to play this week, but he's been practicing. So that guy is an exciting player that no need to rush him back though on a one and five team. But if you can build some more equity for Chuba, maybe even Deontay Johnson. Yeah. I was thinking um, that too. You start moving these cats and build for next season. So this uh, Washington should handle this game, but it's the NFL. So we don't know, but we know. <laughs> yeah, no question that hurts for, uh, Washington coming, coming around a little bit last week, uh, looking, uh, like the old Ertz there. So old man Ertz still getting it done all these years later. Yeah. Hey Dave, would yeah. you be into a Super Bowl rematch? Yeah. <laughs> What are you talking about, Casey? I am talking about the Kansas City Chiefs, the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs at the San Francisco 49ers. And the odds makers have the Niners as a one-point favorite in this week. Dave, this is make this is sneaking me into a parlay. I got a three or four uh, team <laughs> parlay cooking with these point spreads this week. But talk yeah. about your favorite team, bro. Well, yeah, we'll get right into the all the red you can uh, take, Casey. Five and O Chiefs coming off their bye, uh, which may be bad news uh, for the 49ers. And here's why Andy Reid is 21 and four as a head coach following a regular season. Is that good? Bye. 21 and four is an 840 winning percentage, Casey. It's the highest for any head coach after bye weeks with at least 10 games as a head coach. Wow. And when his team is coming off a of bye and the other team, has played the week the week before so it's not so it's so they're playing on more rest a week's more rest 
Reed is 20 and two in those circumstances, oh. <clears throat> just like this circumstance. So, um, well, let's see. The odds makers maybe didn't consider that when they uh, made the 49ers a one point favorite here, but um, they are at home. Uh, the Mahomes Kelsey connection, Casey, you might beg to differ, but it seems to have come alive a little bit um, in the last uh, game or two there after being sort of dormant uh, early in the year. Uh, Edwards Alaire has been added to the 53 man mm-hmm. roster. Right. So obviously Pacheco still gone uh, from the scene there, but uh, Kareem Hunt came back. He had some pretty nice, uh, you know, a nice addition to the team now getting Edwards Alaire back. So they're getting some pieces there. Obviously, those are good news things, but we talked Rasheed Rice uh, missing the rest of the season earlier. That's a bad thing. They have a lot of talent at receiver, though Rice was the one that really emerged as the as the guy. I mean, he was really, uh, uh, you know, uh, playing well. So uh, Kansas City defense, I, I, you know, Spags has got these guys playing sixth in points given up, at, um, just 17 points uh, per game. So I love how this Chiefs team keeps reinventing itself. You I know. know what I mean? It used to yeah. be so pass heavy. They get Pacheco. They start going run heavy. Then they get defensive. They can kind of be that chameleon. But the thing that never changes is they just win, dude. Yeah, well, it's Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes and uh, Veach, the guy drafting these dudes and acquiring these players. That that three-pack right there. And then you throw Kelsey into the mix there, uh, the savvy veteran there. Uh, yeah, something's got to give. But th- these guys are these guys are tough to beat. Yeah, you know, and we're looking at these Niners shockingly six games in. They are three and three. They come off the the mini by getting that Thursday night game, handling uh, their business against the Seahawks. They were as close for a little bit, but they played better late. Brock Purdy, a very efficient game, 18 to 28, 255, three touchdowns, dude. George Kittle getting healthy, two touchdowns, 58 yards. Debo kind of doing a little bit of everything, uh, running and receiving, had 102 yards and a touchdown. Um, and, oh, Jordan Mason goes out after he's carrying what eight happened? yards. They oh, no run? problem. They just bring in Isaac Guarendo, the rookie. All these running backs, dude, and the Cowboys don't have shit back there. It's kind of. It's the you know. system, Casey. It's a plug and play running back thing. That's why I thought it was weird that they needed McCaffrey so bad. But he is a different guy. He is. But everybody can run in in uh, Kyle Shanahan's run schemes. Yeah, Guarendo, dude, ten for ninety nine, and he could have had a couple more yards. He ended up uh, sliding down instead of getting the touchdown. Tried to do the right thing and milk that clock in that situation. He could have yeah. just slammed it into the end zone. Yeah. And his boy Juice Kyle Juzik comes in there and uh, poaches that touchdown. But the Niners have been battling so many injuries. They still have some guys that are out, but they're starting to get healthy. Um, I don't know if it's going to be enough against these Chiefs, but I am completely stoked to see this game. Yeah. Niners are going to be fine. They might uh, probably going to end up winning that division when all is said and done, too, because it doesn't look like anybody besides Surprise division in terms of the way it's come along. Yeah. You know, we thought, especially after they lost to the Rams, we're like, okay, the Rams are going to be in there, and the Rams haven't won a game since. So, um, but this is going to be a hell of a good game, dude. All right. And on to another game. It is Sunday night football, Casey. It is the New York Jets at the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Steelers are at home where their crowd will be insane with their terrible towels, and uh, it'll be nice. Uh, and cool, I'm sure, in Pittsburgh. They are favored by two in this one against the Jets. Yeah, every other week, Pittsburgh gets a uh, a home game on Sunday night there. What up with that? Yeah. But Jets have been in the news for all the right or wrong reasons. I guess it's more right this week. Obviously, they bring in Devontae Adams. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how into the playbook he can get in the short week. They're coming off the Monday night game, so it's already a short week for the Jets. So maybe they yep. have a couple packages for him and we'll see if him they and expect Rogers... Devontae to play. So yeah. And they, they'll, they'll go back to their favorite plays from the old days. Right. Yeah. Um, disappointing loss on Monday night though, for those yeah, jets, for too sure. many mistakes and sorry, dude, the officiating in that game was <gasps> absolute garbage. I don't need it. I don't, it's just too much. And if Horrible. it was the same from every crew, I can get with that, but it's so different. It's so yeah. inconsistent. It makes the games unwatchable. Someone needs to tell these donkeys that nobody is tuning in to the game to see them be over officious jerks. That yeah. being said, 
I like how quick they were to go to New York to get help on the replay. That should happen more often, Casey. All the That's, time now. We we knew that is a subject for a future show. This show had too much meat on the bone, but I've got a I've got a, definitely a, a bone to pick with the NFL regarding that exact scenario. We'll, we'll touch base on yeah, that. Yeah, at uh, least we have the episode. technology. Let's use it. We'll see what the Jets can do. Uh, <laughs> see if they can pick up that Green Bay magic in just a short week, and then the Steelers. They might be letting Russ cook in this thing. He took hmm. some reps with the number one this week. He's finally got a full week of practice. That calf seems to be all good. Uh, they're winning with Justin Fields, but it's not sexy. Five passing touchdowns, not good enough. Only one interception and five rushing touchdowns. He obviously has a different skill set yes. than Russ does. But someone needs to throw to these wide receivers. Someone needs to be able to hit pickings. Someone needs to hit Patrick Henry, Aquanimius Fryer Moot, too. We so, <laughs> yeah, haven't been able to say his name enough. This yeah. Year. So maybe we see Russ this weekend. You know what the Steelers do, though? They run the ball and play defense. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see if Russ is ready to be a Steeler. We haven't seen him play in a while after he got benched in Denver. Now he's in Pittsburgh, has been hurt. So um, I would like to see Russ play just for the, the hell of it. Yeah. I'm on the other side of that coin, Casey. I'd rather they stay with Fields in this one and and utilize the legs of fields to threaten the defense um that jets defense which is very very good yeah you don't want to pass the ball too much against that jets yeah. defense they're susceptible to the run oh absolutely okay moving it on to monday night football it is a double header casey how much do you love these double headers dude it's the only thing that the nfl gets absolutely wrong maybe not the only thing but this is the biggest flaw when it was 4 o'clock and 7 o'clock, that was great. Give me a doubleheader on Monday night yes. all day long, staggering yep. them for 40 minutes. Dumb. I hate yeah. it. It's stupid. Yeah, one of them's on at um, 5.15, and the other one's on at 6. That's West Coast time. Um, so they're 45 minutes stupid, apart. Dude. Um, it's idiotic. But um, get it started, Casey, with the Ravens at Tampa Bay. This is a pretty awesome game between the Ooh. two conferences here. Um, both teams sitting at four and two Ravens on the road. Uh, both of these teams coming in, playing real good football. Ravens are favored, though, by four. Dude, and these Ravens, man, they are starting to put it together. It's it's unfathomable that ever, it's always about the Cowboys, Dave, but that they had a chance to go out and get the king and they didn't even call him. Make him tell you no. Make him tell you whatever you had to offer was not the enough. The Ravens were like, would you like $10 million? And he said, okay. And he's provided, dude, last week, 24, 132, five and a half per carry, two touchdowns. This guy has 20 100-yard rushing games in his career. There's four cats on that list. Jim Brown, Emmett Smith, I think LT, and now Derrick Henry, man. That is an exclusive <laughs> freaking list. And the King does not look to be slowing down anymore. And this was the number one rush team last year, but now they're doing it with the actual running back. It's not all Lamar. He still added his 40 yards yeah. and he can kill you at any point, but you're taking so much pressure off this guy and you're putting so much pressure on the defenses. This is the formula because defense and the run game travels. And last year in the AFC championship, they didn't have to travel. They had it at home, and they made Lamar throw 40 times. If that happens again with Derrick Henry on this team, this is the stupidest coaching staff in the history of football. But, Dave, right. I don't think that's going to happen. As the king goes, these Ravens will go. And this is potentially a Super Bowl preview, too. That yeah. being said, I'm rooting for the Bucks because they are shaking and baking, but they are going to have their hands full, dude. Yeah. Real quick on the Ravens before I move on to the Bucks. The three tight ends that they've got and that they've developed have allows them to go big body formations, mm -hmm. but still pass through the air. Then they get the shifty Zay Flowers that is so hard to cover and uh, in open space and stuff. So the way they have put the team together, adding Henry, those three tight ends, I mean, it's Zay brilliant. last week, dude, nine catches, 132 yards. Came at some crucial time, too. And now Bateman and Aguilar just come up with the play when they need one. They're yeah. complimentary just roles. in a couple of other plays here and there. Yeah. And you mentioned the tight ends there, dude. Um, you 
you know, how do you defend that team when they're all in? Because they can all block and they can all catch a ball downfield. This is a dangerous, dangerous Ravens team. Yeah, the, the, you don't have the personnel to match up with Mm-mm. with the, those bodies. All right, moving over to the Bucks, who are also uh, a pretty dangerous personnel with uh, with the Bake Show. The way he is shaking and baking, dude. The Bucks are now four and two, uh, beating New Orleans last week in a big game. Uh, they went into the fourth quarter only up by four points and scored 20 in the fourth Oof. quarter to make it a blowout, dude. They just crushed him. Baker overcame three costly picks. Um, Two weren't his yeah. fault, though, off the right. hands of receivers. But Correct. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Way to defend your guy. Right. But 325 do. yards <laughs> passing, four touchdowns in the win. Man, he's slinging it. I'll tell you what. Also, we talked about it in the fantasy domination section, led by Sean Tucker, running back, and – Bucky Irvin with a good game. The Bucks ran for 277. Ugh. So speaking of running the football, <laughs> right? The Bucks, the Bucks offense is ninth in yards, Ooh. eighth in rushing, second in points scored for the Bucks, dude, at 29.7. Baltimore's defense, number one versus the rush, but oh. 31 versus the pass and 24th in points given up. This isn't as good of a Baltimore's defense as we've seen in in recent years. Mm -hmm. So especially susceptible to the pass. And Baker's slinging it, baby. Baker's slinging, dude. Oh, that's going to be a fun game. And Dave, do you have – let me introduce the game, and then you can give your thoughts. If you want to go back to this stupid staggered uh, start, but it is our Los Angeles Chargers at the Arizona Cardinals, and the Chargers are two-and-a-half-point favorites on the road. Yeah, Chargers. I'll go a little heavier on the Chargers, uh, of course. But um, Chargers got a lot healthier in the bye week, big time. And uh, when you get a week five bye, you're like angry when the season comes out. But this one was perfect. Yeah. A- at the time that it came, we were able to get a lot of guys back. Uh, they got a win in Denver, a big win against a, a Broncos team that's tough. Uh, that's the first time they've won in five years and they get themselves to three and two chargers dominated time of possession with over 37 minutes in the football game. At one point, the chargers, and this might be the, the I don't know, check the numbers on this, but a 20 play drive for 76 yards that lasted 10 minutes and 29 seconds. Oh my God, dude, that is Harbaugh's wet dream, bro. That, that is a will... Harbaugh freaking drive, dude. No doubt about it. That, Ooh. I mean, <laughs> 20 plays, 10 and a half minutes. Okay. Chargers offensively. And I say this now, they are a work in progress. They really are, especially with that young receivers group. They're near the bottom of the league in passing, even though Justin Herbert, uh, and he had the, the high ankle sprain, but, um, that's a, that is coming. There are glimpses here, let's say. Um, but they have been way better running the ball than tell me about their running back. Well, yeah, they're they're tenth in rushing right now. J.K. Dobbins has been explosive in a couple of the games the Chargers lost. We couldn't run, but in the ones we won, uh, we looked pretty good running the football. So, got to iron that out a little bit. Develop that passing game. A lot of young receivers. Like Who's I said, the rook there's... though? Give me that rook running back. Oh, how about yes? First touch, Kamani Vidal. First touch in the NFL was a thirty-yard reception for a touchdown. Runs the wheel route perfectly. It was a damn good catch too. And he caught just that back into the football, really. And uh, Dude, he's like into a the love child of Michael Turner. And um, what's his face? Who's on the, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name on the commandos this year. Eckler. Eckler, yeah. He's like beefy like Turner, but like speedy like Eckler. Dude. Yeah, and he's wearing Eckler's number 30. Uh, real exciting kid. Uh, only really got the action because um, – Edwards was was uh, injured and put on IR, so that opened the door for him. But it was only a matter of time before uh, he was uh, on on the field, and hopefully they give him a bigger role this week because he he's a little dude and behind a huge offensive line. You can lose him pretty quick, mm-hmm. and he's explosive. I think he broke as many, if not more, tackles uh, in college football last year. Um, and so he he can make you miss and he can break tackles. So really an exciting young back. But um, Chargers, uh, you know, the defense is kind of almost like here's the defense. We we are looking really good. Legit. Sixth in total yards, eighth versus the pass, sixth versus the run. Number one in points given up 13.2 points per game. Chargers uh, also awesome in the in the turnover differential plus seven. So it's near the top of the league there. Nine takeaways, just two turnovers on the whole season, right? Cardinals, I'm, I'm going to give you a little something. You're two and four. 
right? That's who wins, <laughs> right? After getting beat last week by Green Bay by three touchdowns. I'm sorry. Uh, they were held to under 100 yards rushing, uh, even with Kyler doing his thing, right? Uh, Kyler was held into check, which is 214 yards uh, and one touchdown. Their defense is near the bottom of the league in all of those stats, yards, pass, rush, points, the whole deal. So defense not getting it done for the Cardinals. Um, but we know Kyler Murray brings that who knows what the hell is going to happen factor. Uh, yeah. He is definitely an exciting player to watch. Um, Chargers had been pretty good against mobile quarterbacks, but last week Bo Nix made him look kind of silly the way he was running away from our pass rush. Casey, I'm going to go on to this other thing here, though. This is what really is pissing me off. Not only is this a stupid doubleheader Monday night football game, which bugs me because it's overlapping, but this Charger game is only on ESPN+. Plus. That means Ugh. besides if you don't live in Los Angeles, which I'm assuming we're going to get it locally, most people don't have ESPN+, Plus, which means you get one game, and it's a really good football game between the Ravens and the Buccaneers, and – I don't know who's going to watch this other game. Yeah. I have no idea who's going to watch the Chargers against the Cardinals because you don't get it, first of all. You're not going to buy ESPN Plus mm -hmm. to get it. So this is an absolute piece of garbage idea, putting a game on ESPN Plus that's a doubleheader Monday night football that is – I mean, it's just, I can't – well, And we've lost. seen the streaming numbers don't touch they don't match anything up. close. So why would you do that? You know, like you got two of the – you know, great young quarterbacks in this league. You got all this yeah. excitement with the Chargers. They look like they have a turnaround. You got Harbs in there. You got Justin Herbert. Yeah. You got Kyler Murray. You might not have Marvin Heron Jr. Might ha not yeah. have John Connor. But they didn't know that when they scheduled this thing. It was dumb. The staggered thing sucks. And putting all these games on paid tiers for streaming sucks as well, man. It's yeah. greed. Yeah. We love the NFL. We almost always say they get it right. They got this one wrong. Yeah, that's a little too bad. All right. Well, it's going to be a freaking great. I, at least we get it in Los Angeles. Right? Yeah. So, all right. Moving out of here, Casey. There is so many ways to check out the football dudes. Trend Zone now available on subscription, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podcast, also available on Amazon Music, wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah. And while you're out there checking out stuff, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Look for the football dudes. We are there. Like us on Instagram and Facebook and follow us on X at football dudes, LA. Or just go to footballdudes.com. It's all there for you right there. And that is going to do it for our longest episode ever on the trend zone. We're not the suits that talk football. We're the dudes that know football. For Casey, I'm Dave, and we are out of here.